It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Bubbleville here at Mohegan Sun. Three days left here in Bubbleville, and it's all a part of ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. We have a triple header of men's basketball today. We start here on ESPNU with UMass Lowell out of the America East and the North Carolina State Wolfpack out of the ACC. Kevin Brown, John Crispin, delighted to be with you as we get your weekend started a little bit early. NC State 2-0, and oh, and Kevin Keats in his fourth year thinks this might be his best Wolfpack team led by a couple of terrific seniors. Well, look, Kevin Keats wants to play with balance, and he's got just that. No one who's really going to take over the basketball game, Mark, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, you lose one of your best point guards uh, six uh, six Markel Johnson six and a half assist a game Braxton Beverly's a guy you got to pay attention to he's one of the best shooters on the floor but he's got to be a facilitator if they want to have success and for UMass Lowell we know about them because they beat a San Francisco team that beat Virginia but they have one of the better players out there in the country at the mid-major level in Obi Noel 24 points a game he can score at every level he's the guy you want to watch for and stop early if you're NC State declared for the NBA draft Obi Noel out of the America East, the UMass Lowell Riverhawks. With a win, as you mentioned, over San Francisco. That came in the bubble last week. They played a very close game at Ohio State this past weekend. We're tied with five minutes to go. Ended up losing that game to the Buckeyes. NC State with wins over Charleston Southern and North Florida. And a miss on the first shot from Devin Daniels. There's Connor Withers for UMass Lowell. Riverhawks picked to finish seventh out of ten teams in the America East, 13 and 19, seven and nine in conference a season ago, and the offensive rebound tap back into the hands of the sophomore Withers. Here is Obi Noel, the senior, number 11 in blue, is the player to watch. This is the grad transfer, Salif Bujay from Arkansas State, working down low. Another chance on the possession, and Ron Mitchell ends it with a three. Starting lineups are brought to you by Liberty Mutual. Daniels and Beverly along with the Nebraska transfer Thomas Allen. The bigs are Jericho Helms and Manny Bates. DJ Funderburk not in the starting lineup today. We're told it is not disciplinary or injury related. Simply NC State wanting to change it up. Thunderbirds is here, went through shoot around and pregame drills, so we do expect to see him shortly. We also see uh, multiple second chance opportunities for UMass Lowell, and DJ Funderburg's one of those guys that can help clean that up. This is Bates inside, and Bates scores for two. Bates has gotten a lot better over his time at NC State. And I think the way they play, it's taken him some time to get used to the pace, the intensity but he has really improved over his years at NC State. Foul against NCC Jericho Hillams, the first of the game. Number four, Jericho Hillams, his first. First team foul against the Wolfpack. Here is Obi Noel, one scholarship offer out of high school that was here to UMass Lowell. A turnover, Connor Withers gives it up. Here's Daniels on the leak out, and Noel knocks it out of bounds. Starting lineups I'm my ass. I'm again brought to you by Liberty Mutual. No Funderburg for North Carolina State. Manny Bates, the much improved big offensively this year, has the first two for North Carolina State. Jericho Helms gets a second consecutive start. For UMass Lowell, as Beverly cans the three. Noel certainly their leading scorer and best player. A couple of sophomores in Mitchell and Withers. The junior, Alan Blunt. And the fifth year senior, Boo Jay, from Arkansas State. 192nd made three in Braxton Beverly's career, seventh on NC State's all time list. I mean, you've got to think he's going to go down as one of the tops. I, I mean, he has really been impressive in his time. And I think it's he's gotten help playing with guys like Markel Johnson that can create so much. He can space the floor a little bit more. Now he's asked to facilitate. It's going to be a little bit of an adjustment. Another basket off a turnover, Jericho Hellams. Already five points off turnovers for NC State, which is outscoring opponents 69-17 off turnovers this year. And they have one of the great shot blockers in the nation, Manny Bates. This will stay with Lowell. Allen was out of bounds. 
but another rejection for Manny Bates. He's already got eight on the year. He could always block shots, but the key is he's in position early. That was, that's was that been his problem in years past where you're chasing the play a little bit. You go to get a block, you're out of position, you foul. Foul trouble's been a problem for Bates. If he can anticipate better, still get that block, he's going to be a force down low on the defensive end. DJ Thunderbrook along with the freshman guard Cam Hayes check in for NC State. And Noel is fouled. Devin Daniels picks up the North Carolina State foul. Fourth year for Kevin Keats at North Carolina State. Seventh year as a head coach overall. 20 plus wins each of his first three seasons. And he thinks this is the most versatile roster they've had. It's unusual because NC State has added five freshmen and no transfers. They might be the only team we've seen in college basketball this year without a transfer. Kevin Keats said, look, I love transfers, but it just happened that they like this freshman class a lot, and they think they're really building something sustainable. Well, and when you surround them with guys like D.J. Funderburg, Mandy Bates, right, Braxton Beverly, Devin Daniels, guys that have been around understand the way Kevin Keats wants to play, you can almost groom freshmen a little bit better than if they're kind of thrust in and trying to figure it out on their own. Beverly can't connect on a second three-point. Try the rebound to Bouget, who nearly throws it away. UMass Lowell has already turned it over three times. Well, that's something NC State does defensively. They speed you up. They, they force you into bad situations. So far, so good. Noel yet to take a shot to the basket. No, in traffic, and it's nearly tipped in by Cam Hayes of NC State. I was going to say, how are you going to call that one? Wolfpack end up with the rebound. I guess closest player to the ball would have gotten credit. Daniels fouled by Withers on the way. Head coach at UMass Lowell's Pat Duquette, eighth season. He has been the only head coach in their Division I era. 13 years at assistant or associate head coach at Boston College. Also the associate head coach at Northeastern. He is a Massachusetts guy through and through. Actually the cousin of Dan Duquette, former general manager. I just want to be the guy that someone says is my cousin, right? Or I'm his cousin. Cousin of John Crispin? Yeah. yeah. Someday. You have any notable cousins right now? No, I want to be the guy that is notable. Oh, you want to be yeah, the notable? Yeah, yeah, okay. just someday. You'll get there. Like, for so long, I was Joe's brother, you know? Yeah. Can I? Two more games here tonight. Might have the opportunity. Well, you can aspire. Oh. Frenzied pace early in North Carolina State. We'll do that to you defensively. Darian Jordan Thomas off the bench is fouled and he will shoot two. I like the pressure. I, I love watching them extend the defense, but as the season goes on, you start to clean little things up and the paint just opening up is an issue. You've got to funnel the basketball away from the paint on that drive. And that's defense learning how to run next to you, not trying to get back in front. You run next to a guy, force him out of the paint. That's how you stop that easy basket. It used to be you, you get in a stance and you slide your feet. That doesn't work anymore. Guys are too good. At times when you're playing full court defense, you just run alongside of him and be disruptive. Manny Bates picked up the foul. He sits. Jericho Hellams returns. And the free throws miss. The offensive rebound to Obi Noel. And I like that from Kevin Keats. Manny Bates picks up a foul. Just sit him down, calm him down, because foul trouble at times is really, you know, it's just crippled this team because of how much of a force he could be on defense down low. Thunderbird tried to defend in Bates' position there, but without the great shot blocker on the floor. And it's Darian Jordan Thomas with the bucket. Sophomore transfer from Wagner. Here's the freshman Cam Hayes. And the rebound into the hands of Alan Blunt. North Carolina State three for seven to start the game. UMass Lowell two of six. On the back cut, Noel. Good find from Withers. Noel's put in a situation where he's going to have to make reads because of the attention he gets because he scores 24 points a game is the best player on the team. So he's got to make the right reads if he wants to get open looks. And then teammates have to find him. 29 consecutive double figure scoring games for Obi Noel. Hayes on the slash and score. And of this giant freshman class, Cam Hayes may be the most advanced. Uh, he moves like he's a junior or senior. Not 
too fast. He's under control. Good poise and picks up that charge. Hayes relentless as North Carolina State's pressure leads to another takeaway. The offensive foul against Blunt. I don't like this. If you, you mess small low, you make the right read. It's a back cut and you trust your player. That's a really tight window. Great pass. Great read. Good finish. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Air Force Reserve. Explore your opportunities with the Air Force Reserve. And Roman, the digital health clinic for men. North Carolina State has had some legendary figures <laughs> as basketball coaches in its history. K. Yao, Jim Valvano, and uh, we specifically remember them today and this week as part of V-Week. Jimmy V, the titular V of V-Week, the 1983 national champion. Kevin Keats talked a little bit with us before the game, and he said, look, you come to NC State, you know about Jim Valvano, the memories, the legacy to live up to. It is ever-present at that school. On the women's side, too, where Kay Yao is a Naismith Hall of Famer, gold medal winning coach in the Olympics in 1988 as well. Here's Helms with a three for North Carolina State and early five points. You look at North Carolina State and you wonder who's the best player on the floor. And that's kind of what I think about if I'm scouting this team. You want to know who that guy is? Well, it could be one of six or seven guys on any given night. I think that's what makes this team dangerous and it allows Kevin Keats to play the way he wants to play. Everybody's a contributor on both ends. And four players last year between 12.7 and 13.3 points per game. Two of those are gone, two of them are back. And a takeaway for Cam Hayes. Fifth turnover, and then Hayes throws it away. Into the game for number two, Khalil Thomas. Take a look now at North Carolina State's up tempo pressure and a takeaway. Helms is fouled off the steal from Thomas Allen. Six turnovers forced by NC State, which had 51 turnovers forced in its first two games. This is kind of typical, particularly early in the season, but I almost feel historically over the past couple of years, this is a team that when they really get their pressure set and they look at the basketball more like dead ball situations, the pressure's very good. On a made basket, it's not as good. And if they can clean that up, they become that much more dangerous with their pressure forcing tempo and pace and really start to dictate the way they want to play. Well, Kevin Keats told us before the game, we asked him, what do you like about your defense these first couple of games? I think at this point, Kevin Keats has a reputation as a pressure defense yeah. coach. He said, actually, I've been most impressed with our half-court defense. Yeah. Well, part of it is when you see the basketball, when you have some versatile pieces that can switch, as long as you communicate well, you have a tough defense to figure out. I also think Thunderbird and Manny Bates are such a key component of that. We've seen guys with length down in the paint. It allows your guards to play the way you want to play. You can pressure around the perimeter if you have somebody that can clean it up in the paint. Foul committed by the freshman Darian Sebron. Obi Noel has already been fouled three times. NC State will be physical with UMass Lowell's leading scorer. Here is Noel off the shot fake. Distributes and a good decision as Darian Jordan Thomas finishes. He's just a player, man. I mean, he could very well force a shot every time down the floor, but he's patient. He gets the right shot and picks his moments here and there. When, quite frankly, I'd probably be chucking 30 up and 30 shots a game if I was here. Well, that's one of the things he's improved on. Pat Duquette said he's more of a point guard now. Hayes with a triple, and the freshman Cam Hayes has five points off the bench. And here comes the pressure. You lose a guy like Markel Johnson, you figure out how you're going to replace those assists. Well, the truth is, you're not. You, you can't replace what a guy does. Hayes is a guy who might be a better offensive player because he's going to seek it out a little bit more. That was always the criticism of Markel Johnson. He didn't seek it out enough. Noel lost the handle. And yeah, that's off the foot of Sebron with six to shoot. 22nd annual ACC Big Ten Challenge coming your way on ESPN and the ESPN app next week.
What a doubleheader we have Tuesday night. North Carolina and Iowa at 7.30 Eastern, followed by number five, Illinois, and number six, Duke at 9.30 at Cameron Indoor. A terrific Sonic blockbuster. Love that first match at North Carolina, which fell at the buzzer in a quote-unquote Maui Invitational against Luca Garza. And the number three, Iowa Hawkeyes. It's funny, too, that the ACC Big Ten Challenge, or Big Ten ACC, whatever you want to call it, there, there's so much talent. The Big Ten is loaded with size, particularly this guy, Luca Garza. One of my favorite players in the country because he really is one of those guys that you say, great college basketball player, regardless of whether it truly does translate to the next level. I hope he gets a look because he's done nothing but overcome. He's fought through injury, and, and you look at the season he had last year, he's been dominant already. He makes his team better, but we get so wrapped up in the which conference is better. You know, it, it doesn't really determine the better conference. It's just who wins those matchups, and we're just lucky enough to see high-level games that you otherwise don't see until the NCAA tournament. Those are two of uh, just a bunch of intriguing matchups this year. ACC should be up. Big Ten should still be terrific. ACC's going to be good if North Carolina State plays like this. Cam Hayes already has hit two threes. He has eight points as the Wolfpack's top reserve. Noel got a step on Helms, pulled it back. This is Bryce Daly, a redshirt sophomore point guard off the bench. Max Brooks through the lane, and Brooks able to finish around Manny Bates. With Hazen at the point, I'm interested to see. Travel there. Maybe he didn't have possession? Looked like a travel at first. Either way, Bates is stripped. You can see is Braxton Beverly more of an impact to the offense if he's playing off the ball? Because he provides you with a space on the opposite side of the ball that allows you to get more drives to the rim, even a dump down into the post. Beverly defending right now, and he holds up with a help. Allen Buck leaves it short. Hayes pushing tempo. Helms. All alone, Jericho Helms reigns it down from deep. So there are good passes and they're field passes. That's a field pass. He understood where his man was. He's going to be open. He's drugged the defense with him by attacking the elbow. And a simple pass back to an open three. That's a heady play from a young player. 12 assists, one turnover on the year for Cam Hayes. A shot fake. And Brooks finishes and draws Manny Bates. Second foul. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. See State starting to get it going. Hayes has been terrific. These are the things I said. Who knows who their best player is? It could be someone different on any given night. Might be Jericho Helms tonight. We'll find it. Kevin Keats is known for one thing. It's being a winner. Kevin Keats is known for two things. It's being a winner and having pressure defenses. 51 turnovers forced in the first two games, 64 points off those, and he's already forced seven, or his team is forced seven today. I like what they do defensively. It's just disruption, and that's the thing. I think a lot of pressure defenses think that you have to force steals. You just have to be disruptive. You have to take a team out of what they want to do, take them out of their comfort zone, eliminate rhythm from the offensive end, take away the initial option in a set, and you've won the defensive possession. Max Brooks leaves it short. DJ Funderburg back into the game with a rebound after Manny Bates picked up his second foul. NC State 8 for 13 from the field to start, including 5 of 7 from 3. Wolfpack were shooting at 54% the first two games. Daniels, typical left-hand shot, and that falls. Devin Daniels with 29 points in the opener with a nifty bucket. Nifty, huh? Nifty. Yeah. Obi Noel only two shot attempts in the game. This is third, and he missed a three. Thunderbird clears the rebound. They're going to have to be more aggressive with how they get him the ball. Maybe work him around some screens. Not an easy one there. The problem is when, you, when you're the best player on the floor, when you're the best scorer on the floor, if you don't get enough looks early, you're going to start to force. 
and the NCAA, NC State defense has been very good, so I think you have to do more to get Obi Noel some open looks to even give the rest of the team confidence on the offensive end. When, when your leading scorer is struggling to score, it takes confidence away from you as a group. How many different players have you seen on Noel so far? I think at least three or four. Oh, they're going to they're talk through some switches. They're not going to give him anything easy. There's another switch. Helms picks him up. Helms all over him. Noel with a kick. The three for Blunt is well out of play and yep. sitting under the shot clock. Get the broomstick out. You know, all the shoot arounds we've come to, um, we've seen that happen a lot. Okay, because the water bottle, that, that was probably ill-advised. The water bottle toss that is full of water, or water, excuse me. Sorry. In case anybody was wondering, gee, where is John Crispin? Sorry, I'm from New Jersey. Jeez. Come on, this is it. This is amazing. Strike four. There you go. There we go, this is going to do it. Maybe give it to a seven-footer. Yeah, just bring Manny Bates off the bench. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's Plinko, ladies and gentlemen. You've just won a brand new Captain Obvious cardboard cutout. Look, I like the idea. You're <laughs> trying to make something happen. What happens when that water bottle, excuse me, uh, lands and just splashes all over I'll the I'll tell court? you what, then you use the other end of the mop. That's what you do. True. That's what it's there. The unintended complications of bubble. Day. Beverly, no, Hellums, yes, the stick pack from Jericho Hellums. He's four for four for the field, and he scored 11 points. I think with some of these offensive rebounds for NC State, they've just been in position. So for UMass Lowell, you've got to work these guys off the block. Keep them out, which also means be aware when a shot's going up. Thomas, no good on a three. Hellums with his third rebound to go with three assists. One block, one steal, and 11 points. Kevin Keats calls him his tight end because of how unguardable he can be. Too quick for a big, too big for a guard. There's Funderburg with terrific position. I mean, Max Brooks is 6'7 freshman. Good luck if you get that deep against DJ Funderburg. Noel, good find. Thomas misses a three. And Brooks commits a foul over the back. Braxton Beverly took a little knock there. Always concerned about the back with Braxton Beverly, but he looks okay. And so does NC State. Jericho Hellams perfect for the field. That's a close one. We are going to find a cure for cancer, but we need your help. We must continue to donate. We must continue to fight, and we need, must continue to do this together. We will heed Craig Sager's call. ESPN and the V Foundation's fight against cancer has not stopped during this challenging year. If you are able, please help us support cancer research. Please help us to find that cure. Visit v.org slash donate. 100% of what you give goes to cancer research. David Daniels with a three out of the timeout. North Carolina State has its largest lead. Wolfpack on a 9-0 run. Kevin Keats has been able to bring different guys in, bring in some of the youth, but play them around experienced players. And there's such an advantage in being able to do that. You know, you're, you're able to play with a little more trust with those guys so long as there's experience on the floor. And I think this is a group that's going to come along a little quicker than, than some others might because of that experience. Seabrook in the corner from Hayes. Back-to-back -back threes for NC State. And the Packer now 7 for 10 from three-point range. There's something about coming into a program and being able to play with the guys that you've watched on TV you are automatically going to learn by playing against them in practice, and then when you get on the floor, you gain confidence. You, you feel empowered. 
team that was picked to finish eighth in the ACC. Could be a really good ACC if North Carolina is a, and North Carolina State is a mid-pack team. Rebound to Sebron again. 6-7 freshman throws it to nobody. Sometimes playing with these guys give you a little too much confidence. You pump the brakes. Play within yourself or stay within yourself. I don't know if it's play within yourself. Well, it it could be both. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Generally. Beverly on the drive daily. And Beverly fouls daily. Hey, this Sunday we've got a top 20 college basketball triple header all part of Feast Week. Villanova and Texas, that's a dandy at 1 p.m. Eastern. Xavier and Cincinnati to follow in the Crosstown shootout. Never any love loss between Xavier and Cincinnati. And then Kentucky, Georgia Tech down in Atlanta. Every game on ESPN and the ESPN app. Boy, Texas, every year it seems like under Shaka Smart, is this the year? Is the talent finally going to hit? Is this the year they're going to come together? Early on, great start. Champions of the Valley Invitational beating North Carolina, Indiana, and Davidson along the way. I don't know if you got to see the finish of that game because you were down here yesterday. Matt Coleman with a step back. I did. One tenth of a second to go. You know, Shock has been able to get a lot of good bigs, and they don't last that long. And I don't mean they last long in transfer. They end up in, in the NBA. You've got to develop guards, and that gives you the consistency you need to play the way you want to play. And I, I think he's got that right now. Coleman has finally become more of an offensive player, and that helps him. Allen smothered on the drive. The rebound cleared by Salif Bouget. Mitchell, well defended by Allen, Nebraska transfer. Off the shot fake, Blunt. On the attack, Blunt misses a layup. UMass Lowell is getting some looks, just not hitting. Seabrook, no foul on the bump. Rebound to Daly. UMass Lowell, the best shooting team in the America East the last two years, just six for 19 to begin. And a takeaway, and then a foul. Obi Noel fouls Thomas Allen after Allen stepped right in front of him for the steal. Noel's first foul. Part of being consistently disruptive is bringing in fresh bodies, and I think that's going to be certainly to Kevin Keats' advantage. He's got an aggressive defense, and if they're fresh, they're going to be that much better, more efficient, not chasing, not being behind the play. When you're tired, you're second to that ball, and it becomes a foul on you. When you're fresh, you beat the offense to that basketball, and you end up with it with the ball in your hands and an offensive possession. E.B. Duana has checked into the game. NC State has gone 10 deep here in the first half. Hayes again, way offline this time. Some of the best teaching points for coaches in the early season for young guys is as simple as good shot, bad shot. It's not really a bad shot for Hayes, but it's not a good shot. And when you've got young guys, you want them taking good shots because good shots make you feel better. When you feel better, you play with better confidence. When you play with better confidence, you make better decisions. Not, not a good shot because it's just a little too early in the shot clock? No rhythm. Noel, and this is going the other way. Offensive foul, Bouget. Yeah, and rhythm is created by a number of things, right? Rhythm is not just moving the basketball or stepping into the shot. It's all of it. Is there flow to that possession? There really wasn't. You just caught it and realized you could get a shot up and you hoisted it. No rhythm in that shot makes it a lower percentage three. You got it. There's a flow to every single game, and at times you think somebody takes a bad shot, but if it fits the flow of the game, it's actually a good shot. Ellums, that's a good shot. Missed it. His first miss from the field. But was it a good shot? I thought so. No, it was. That's a guy. <laughs> look, that's a guy. If he can get a 10 foot jump shot off, then you take a 10 foot jump shot. NC State has forced 10 turnovers, and UMass Lowell finally gets a bucket. Darian Jordan, Jordan Thomas after UMass Lowell had missed its last seven shots. Daniels wants a Duana screen. 
Off fire to the three as Duane hits the deck. You like that shot? Not a bad shot. He read the defense. Shot was based on the read. Now, at the same time, I, his shot isn't always that pretty, but at times you can perfect it in perfection. That was pretty. That is pretty from Cam Hayes, the 6 1 freshman from Greensboro. Doesn't it seem like he plays at a different speed? Yeah. And that's why I say he looks old out there. I, I'm not saying he looks old. I mean, he plays old because he, he doesn't have to go in fifth gear all the time. He can just cruise through, change his directions, change his speeds, and, and he's crafty with a finish. Mitchell. Boy, it's been a long time since Obi Noel has had a shot. He's one for three for two points. They're a 24 point per game score. Daniels unimpeded to the 10. He's almost reminds me a little bit, and again, I, I, I give him a compliment in this. He's not there yet, but Cassius Winston. Cassius Winston had a different pace, and it was a poise that looks like he's much older than a freshman, and he's kind of has that. There'll be a lot of things to clean up and a lot of room to grow, but he's got a poise about him that I think is something that you can trust and build upon. A three from Thomas, meanwhile, just the second of the game for Lowell. Allen unable to answer. Another knock away by Daniels, UMass Lowell. Having some real trouble with this NC State pressure. Will pack 94 deflections in their first two games. So they're being disruptive on the ball, but they're also switching a lot of screens, which means you're not able to make that initiating pass and you end up with a tough shot. Three missed by Thomas, rebound to Daniels. And Daniels is fouled. Took a long time to get to our under four break, but baby, we made it. NC State up big here in the first. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's, home for the holidays. NC State's done a nice job defensively on Obi Noel, and that's not something that uh, a lot of teams have been able to say over the past few years. Second ever first team All-America East player in the short history of UMass Lowell basketball. And this is a young man who tested the NBA draft waters this offseason. It wasn't likely he was going to go, but still, to have a UMass Lowell player test the NBA draft waters, you might think, well, what happened in recruiting? Where did he come from? This was his only scholarship offer. And when we asked Pat Duquette, you know, what did happen? What did you see in him that other teams did not? He said, frankly, I don't know what other teams didn't see. We signed him in July after his senior year. Think about that. After he graduated high school, he was signed in July. One of UMass Lowell's assistant coaches saw Obi Noel playing, and Pat Duquette called that assistant. And he said, you tell that kid to stop playing now, get him on campus this weekend, and we are offering him a scholarship. His first and only offer, and now he's a young man who was in the NBA draft process last year. Well, it's a great story. But it's also a reminder that there's a ton of talent out there. There's an abundance of talent. We talk so much about hard, how hard it is to recruit. Well, if you're trying to get the same kids that John Calipari's trying to get, yeah, it's hard to recruit. If you're trying to get the kids that Coach K's getting, it's hard to recruit. But there's so much talent out there that if you have the confidence in your own ability as a coach to develop players, you can turn guys into you know, potential pros. 29 straight games and double figures. And yes, I do want to admit that we did TV jinx Obi Noel. He threw the ball away as we were talking about him. But still a terrific player and coming off 35 points a week ago against yeah, Illinois State. Yeah, it's like conversation, right? When, it, when you haven't taken a lot of shots, you're the best player on the floor. People say he needs to be more selfish. And, you know, I, I get that people don't like to hear that. The, the real term is assertive. You need to be more assertive. And it's not just assertive in the shot. It's assertive in getting the shot. It's assertive in cutting to the basket, making the defense work. Stop posting if you need to. You have to be assertive in seeking out shot opportunities. Just picked up a second foul, Noel. He's not going anywhere with a minute 19 and a half. Jericho Ellums hits the free throws. I mean, the real truth is he hasn't gotten a lot of looks because his guards have been disrupted, uh, disrupted and they haven't been able to get him the ball. 10-second violation. UMass Lowell didn't get it across half court in time. 
Another turnover forced by NC State. That's 12 in the game. Hey, Saturday night, Trevor Lawrence and Clemson on track for a sixth straight ACC championship game. They have one more obstacle. It's Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, a Hokies team that's had a couple of weeks to prepare. 7.30 Eastern from Blacksburg on ABC and the ESPN Looks like Clemson Notre Dame 2 is in the making. As long as the Tigers get past the Hokies. Helms. And a rebound to Khalil Thomas. That's such a hard shot that you don't realize how difficult that is. Like stepping into an eight footer. Jordan Thomas with a team high six for UMass Lowell. This is Khalil Thomas. Oh, Darian Jordan Thomas missed the offensive rebound, Noel. And Noel's first shot attempt since the nine minute 51 second mark. I guess it won't officially be a shot attempt, though, but he will go to the line for two. Yeah, again, it sounds inexcusable. Like, how does that happen? Well, you have to give credit to the Wolfpack defense. They've been so disruptive at that, like, initiation point where you want to get into your offense. You want to call a set, make that first pass. You haven't even been able to get the ball over half court half the time, and now you can't make that first pass. It's kind of been a scramble mode offensively, and he's been that one guy that you just take away. You don't let him get a catch. Noel one for two. You know, so much attention for UMass Lowell because the team they beat in San Francisco beat Virginia. And it's so interesting about college basketball that that's even possible, right? You know, I had San Francisco, they, after they beat Virginia, it looked like a different team. It's just day to day. I had UMBC beating Vermont and then beating Virginia. I never would have called UMBC beating Virginia in the NCAA tournament. It's just crazy this game is so unpredictable. Same conference as UMass Lowell, the America East. NC State takes the use it or lose it timeout. They've been terrific from deep, seven for 14 from three. Well, the right guys have gotten good looks, and that's really what you look for in an offense. You know, offense is not about making shots. I know that sounds silly. It's not. It's about getting good looks. When you get good looks as part of the process, you make a higher percentage, and everybody feels good. Someone out there is like, well said. No, no, they're not saying well said. Is it, I, oh, I so said, you're not supposed to score? Yeah. I said well said. I, I do want to hammer that point home because at times as fans, you get so consumed by whether the shot went in or it didn't. When truth be told, you should feel confident in your team's offensive attack that they're able to move the ball and get high percentage shots. Just wait till the next half. NC State 50% from the field, 15 for 30, 50% from three, six of eight from the line. A brilliant offensive half, only four turnovers as well. Freshman Shaquille Moore will dribble it out. Daniels, last shot of the half, and Daniels back rims it. NC State forced 13 turnovers in the first half. That's 64 turnovers forced in two and a half games this year. They cash in for 16 points off those. And the Wolfpack lead by 24 at the break. Where is Bubbleville exactly, you wonder? It's right here in Uncasville, Connecticut at Bohegan Sun. We've got some terrific basketball still on tap. Today is the first of a triple header UConn and USC coming up 7 Eastern, the middle game in the Roman Legends Classic. A very good UConn team that is back in the Big East this year against one of the great freshmen of the country, Evan Mobley, who had a double-double in a blowout win over BYU on Tuesday. Florida and BC will follow that. We'll have more second-half action here from Bubbleville. NC State up big on UMass Lowell. Watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Welcome back to Mohegan Sun. Let's bring it on down to Bubbleville. NC State 43, UMass Lowell 19 at 20 minutes. This is our game track brought to you by Roman. NC State plus nine in the turnover department. 
16 nothing points off turnovers in the first two and a half games. NC State has outscored its opponents 80 to 17 off turnovers. That's a lot. Yes, it is a lot. Kevin Brown, John Crispin, thank you, John, for your analysis. Um, what stood out to you for that first 20 minutes? The disruption defensively that led to everything they got on the offensive end if you're NC State. UMass Lowell struggled to get the ball in the front court, and once they did, they struggled to initiate any sort of offense. With no offense, there's no rhythm, and they also could not get to the, the ball to their best player at Obi Noel, and that's a challenge. I look to see them changing the way they attack on the offensive end, including that pressure. You've got to attack pressure to score, not just avoid it to make passes. I expect an, uh, an adjustment out of the half. Obi Noel, 24 points per game in the first three, only two points, uh, three points, beg your pardon, on three shots, one of three from the field. Meanwhile, North Carolina State, three players scored in double figures in the half. Jericho Hellams had 13, Devin Daniels and Cam Hayes, each with 10. And that's kind of par for the course for NC State. They share it. They play with great balance on the offensive end. Connor Withers, an open three, and that's pretty much the story of the game for Lowell. They have had some clean looks. They have just not hit them. Eight for 25 now from the field. But what people don't understand is that's a benefit of the disruptive defense. If you're NC State, you force quick shots. You rush shots as an opponent. You don't have the same rhythm that an offense may normally have. Like switching up the zone a little bit, try to be disruptive on your own. You can't give up a layup. Daniels with Bates occupying some space in the lane. Devin Daniels with 12. Braxton Beverly does look better, too. I saw him a lot last year, and I think he was limited with the back. And in talking to Coach and their SID, the time away, you know, we don't think of this as like gym rats hang around the gym and they work so hard all summer. Braxton Beverly needed rest, and I think the rest was the best thing for his back and should help him get through the season at more full strength. Out of all the horrible, sad, tragic things that have happened due to COVID-19, too many to list, for Braxton Beverly, he basically had to rest. He yeah. couldn't do a lot of things, as a lot of us couldn't do because of COVID-19. And he just rested, and the back is much better. He looks great in the first few games. Daniels with another bucket. He's got the first two of the half. Now a game high 14. You know, there's something to take away from that, because when you consider what these guys put themselves through to play at this level, you can't ever take a day off. And I know that's cliche, but the reality is you just can't. The pressure to perform, the pressure to succeed and get to the next level, which in high school, the next level's college. In college, the next level's the pros. And you really can't take a day off. And these guys fight through injuries. They come back from surgeries. Sometimes you need to be able to step away. This is Salif Bougey, Arkansas State transfer with a three-point play. So extended pressure is good for UMass Lowell, but if you're NC State, you attack it, get yourself a layup, and punish them for adjusting. Saw a lot of the zone from UMass Lowell on Sunday in their game at Ohio State. They lost by 10. They were tied with five minutes to go. The zone gave the Buckeyes some real issues. Daniel Strip and Noel. I think that ball was off of Daniel's head. Noel down the other way. And Withers leaves it short. Noel has certainly had some chances to force some shots and take some shots. Ellums with 15. Jericho Ellums. Well, I think that also says something about Obi Noel is the fact that he's not forcing shots. And I'd rather see him put a few more up be more again assertive in seeking out the opportunity but just hasn't been there and I think you got to credit the collective defense of the Wolfpack he has four assists and he could probably have seven or eight nice drive by Bougie who's got five points in the last few possessions in that situation Manny Bates somewhat foul prone got two in the first half that's a great opportunity to attack him that space and Bougie finished Good look for Allen. Allen hits a three. Thomas Allen, the red shirt junior, back home in Raleigh after a couple of years at Nebraska. Thomas Allen was a great pickup. The experience he had in the Big Ten 
it's hard to replicate that, the physicality. And I think he brings a great experience to this Wolfpack team, and the style may suit him better here. Officials are going to debate whether this is a goaltending or not. Thomas Allen was originally a North Carolina State commit, and then Kevin Keats got here, and Kevin Keats essentially said to Thomas Allen, you don't have to stay if you don't want. I know this is a new coaching staff, <laughs> and I understand if you're not 100% committed, that's a goaltender. Yeah. And uh, Thomas no, Allen went to Nebraska, and then after a couple of years wanted to come back home, and he said he remembered how supportive Kevin Keats yeah. was, left a good feeling in his mind. You think that, you know, you think about it, it's like, yeah, that sounds like the right way to do it. You know, I'm going to give you an opportunity. We'd love to have you. But if you really don't feel committed to this, I get it. By the way, no basket was the ruling there. Third foul against Bates. But you thought it was Golton. Yeah, I thought so, but I was telling a story, so maybe I was wrong. All right, the foul is now on Allen 5, not Bates 15. So that's two fouls on that young man. I think this is a unique opportunity, a strange opportunity for Kevin Keats to see if Manny Bates can stay on the floor. You know, granted, it's, it's early in the season, the third game, but this is a guy you need. His presence alone defensively allows you to play the way, the way you want to do, uh, way you want to play around the perimeter. But he has to stay out of foul trouble. Well, the country in block rate last year, led the ACC in total blocks. Allen hits a three. Back-to-back -back triples for Thomas Allen. And Beverly with a deflection. This has just been tough for UMass Lowell. I mean, it's... You look at the bench, and they just seem dejected because they can't get anything going offensively. I would just clear and let him go to work. Trust your best player to handle the pressure and make a play. Oh well, and he draws a foul against Bates. That will be Manny Bates' third foul. And they've struggled so much just getting the ball up because they're trying to pass it back and forth. Just give it to your best player and allow him to attack the pressure. He's got a little bit of work to do to extend his double-figure scoring streak. 29 in a row with at least 10 points. He got to the line, Obi Noel, in the opener against San Francisco 21 times, yep. 14 of 21 from the free throw line. And here comes DJ Thunderbird to Bates. You look at the free throw numbers, they've been enormous. More than 11 per game in the first three. And this lineup on the floor is, is a pretty formidable lineup for NC State. I know Hayes is checking in here on the make. But this is a good lineup, even with Hayes coming in. A good lineup. And I mentioned Hayes. I, I like his pace. He's got kind of the old man pace, which is the greatest compliment you can give a young kid. Doesn't get sped up, has good poise, and it does. It reminds me a little bit of a freshman Cassius Winston. Now, the question is, can you get him to play at the level of intensity that Kevin Keats wants him to play? I have a question on this, but we're almost at the end of 16, which is a dangerous time to ask. Okay, now I'm going to ask it. Uh, what reminds you uh, of a young Cassius Winston with Cam Hayes? The poise in the feel. Uh, Cassius was at another level, but even physically, he just wasn't there yet, right? Didn't have the build, the physique, to be able to play at the highest level his freshman year. Now, he changed a lot over his sophomore season because he understood what he needed to improve upon, but there's a feel component. You watch the eyeballs. You know, kind of probing the whole court, doesn't get sped up, makes good decisions. There's a lot of little things in there that he does well. Great decision there on a feed to Thunderbird. And a UMass Lowell foul will send us to break. NC State rolling, looking to go to 3-0. and Thomas Allen after being shut out in the first half. At back-to-back -back threes to extend this major Wolfpack lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's, home for the holidays. First of a triple header here in Bubbleville at Mohegan Sun, Kevin Brown, John Crispin. I will be tag teaming out for Boog Shambi for the two nightcaps, two good ones coming up. UConn, USC, 7 o'clock, ESPN, Florida against Boston College 
at 9.30. Big East, Pac-12, SEC, ACC. ACC's NC State running away with the first game of the day here, up by 29. That was a shot, and now it's thrown in by Bates, who thought about going for the shot from Allen, and then punched in the miss. Well, sometimes those runners in the paint, because you're off balance, it may appear to be a pass, but guys have gotten really good about hitting those off-balance floaters. I just go with, well, if it didn't hit the rim, it wasn't a shot. If it did hit the rim, it was. Who's the best you ever played with that, that shot or played against? You know what? That's a great question. I'll get back to you on that, because okay. that's a really good question. We got time. Here's Noel. Still only three field goal attempts, but he drops it off for Bujain. Look, Noel only three attempts, but that is his fifth assist to the game. He has become more of a point guard in the Riverhawks' first few games, and he's tried to set up his teammates here. I think kind of thinking about that question, this shot hasn't really been in the game that long. You know, the running, whatever, 5'10 footer, it's really reserved a decade or so ago for the best players. So now, in today's game, everybody's got to be able to shoot that shot. Why is that? I think the game has evolved. You know, there's more space on the floor. You know, somebody pops up to take a layup away, and you're six feet tall. You've got to be able to hit that runner before you get the shot blocked. Noel with another assist here. Bouget finally punches it in. That's six assists here. Obi Noel. But also, Kevin, the game changes based on what you practice in, in your youth time, right? You know, when you're young, what do you practice? Because what you practice when you're young, like now you've got sixth graders practicing a Euro step. So, of course, they're going to be more skilled at that than, than even I might have been towards the end of my playing career because it's just not what we learned how to do. You know, we used to get taken out of the game for shooting a step-back jump shot. Nowadays, it's just about creating the space and getting a good shot off. The, the game has really changed a lot in, in just a, a matter of a decade. And I think a lot of it has been in, in the sense of freedom, freedom of expression, freedom to, to maximize the potential of the talent. And I think you have to live with certain things today that coaches a decade or two decades ago never would have allowed. Hayes probing. And Thunderbird going for the rebound was fouled. Third foul against Noel. On, on that subject, the subject of freedom of expression and, and creativity, where does this NC State team stack up offensively from what you saw the first couple of games from what you've seen here? Well, I would say I think they're balanced enough that whoever is the hot hand is going to get the ball. And, and when you have a balanced team, you become a generally unselfish team and a lot of that comes from what they do on the defensive end if you buy in defensively you get up and down the floor you play with great pace you have just enough shooters to get space you get that at the rim you know i said in the open or after the open i think i had a rough open uh when you have balance it could be anybody's night and when it's anybody's night you're more patient when you're trying to find it you can take your time to figure out who's going to have the hot hand, but also, what's the defense doing that is going to give a guy like Thomas and Allen open looks? Are we going to protect the paint a little bit more and keep DJ Funderburk and Manny Bates off the glass? Well, if so, then your guards have the opportunity. So I think it gives Kevin Keats an opportunity to kind of feel it out a little bit more and not have to force it into anybody in particular's hands. That makes you hard to scout, too. Funderburk, two, missed the free throw. One of eight different NC State players that have scored in the game. They've got three in double figures. And a takeaway for Hayes. Another turnover forced. And another turnover leading to points. Hayes with the assist. Helms the finish. That's five assists to go with ten points for the freshman Cam Hayes. I think Hayes, Allen, and Braxton Beverly are a key asset for Kevin Keats. Really impressive the way they all can facilitate. Some shoot a little bit better than others. I really like the ball in Hayes' hands. I think he makes pretty good decisions. Plays at a good pace. And a guy like Helms, he's another one of those guys. He could be a 20-point guy on any given night. Not a 20-point a game, but a 20-point guy on any given night. You think about the balance they had last year. What, four or five guys averaging over 12 and a half points a game. 
Last game, Allen's had 17 points in just 23 minutes. Got 17 and 21 today. And another takeaway. And this time, Moore cannot finish with a good defense from the sophomore to little Thomas. Underberg commits a foul against Darian Jordan Thomas. Second foul on DJ Funderburg. You know, kind of stay on that point, though. When you do have balance, one of the challenges is who do you go to to close out a game? I think you have to have a guy when it comes down to end of game situations. And it's not just the guy that can make the play, but it's a guy you trust the most to make the best play. And that at times is a challenge when you have such a balanced attack. Now, if you really have good balance and you have good patience and unselfishness, you trust five on the four to make the right decision and you live with whatever shot you get. But that's rare. You usually have somebody that you go to. I think Markel Johnson, CJ Bryce, those are two guys you trusted Markel Johnson to make a play. Even if it was a shot, you trusted him. They're gonna have to figure that out over, over the course of the next few games. So if it's down the line, NC State, 70, Duke 68. As we get into the season, Daniels probes and scores. Is it too early for you to know yet who is that guy for NC no, State? No, but I have the answer. The answer is whatever the matchup that you like. You know, it depends if the defense is switching, so there's too many variables to say exactly who it is, but it comes down to the matchup you like. Well, that's no fun. Right, it's a political answer, I isn't it? Some strong hot takes from you, Crispin. Come on. Yeah, you got the wrong guy. But it's, it's, I mean, look, when you consider what coaches consider, and I think I can't even get deep enough to explain that it also has, as you know, it comes down to foul trouble, right? Who are you going up against? What's the line? Are they switching? Are they not switching? What situations did we like? What situations did we not like throughout the course of the game? There's so much. Did the slip screen work? If the slip screen, there's so many things that you have to consider as a coach that it's really hard. And that's why I say I think it comes down to a guy. Because if you have that guy, all those other variables tend to go out the window. You put that guy in the right situation. That's why the, the best asset on the floor is having the best player on the floor. More off the mark on a North Carolina State three. Pack nearly doubling the UMass Lowell Riverhawks as Moore commits the foul. Hey, it's, it's funny we have the conversations about, okay, where does NC State, you know, stack up against the ACC competition? And the, the right answer is who knows? I think at this point, we have to look at this season as a as a total unknown because we don't know what games are going to be played. We don't know when. We don't know how this is going to affect one team versus another. I just think all you can do, we hear coaches say it over and over again, control the controllables. Improve every single day. That's all you can do. But I do see this as an NC, NC State team that should finish in the middle of the pack, if not you know, the upper echelon of the ACC. I feel like what they can do defensively will be disruptive enough to a lot of the younger teams in the conference. It should give them an edge. Tied for fifth in the ACC last year. They were 10 and 10 in conference. Finished the season 20 and 12 before the shutdown. Daniels, another strong attack. 18 for Devin Daniels, who has lived at the rim. Got it. Noel, that is his first field goal attempt since 9.51 of the first half. And is tipped in by Max Brooks, the miss. Noel has gone to the free throw line a couple of times, but those are not registered as field goal attempts. Bates from Beverly. He's really improved. I gotta say, he's really improved. Even just that gather. There, there were times, even last year, where he would try to shoot a shot off balance and, and he never even got it at the rim or got blocked. He, he just gathered his feet, got balanced, and finished. That basket will not count. That is a UMass Lowell foul. 
on Obi Noel, his fourth. Evan Daniels, one of those guys on any given night, like you have quite a few for the Wolfpack. Who could be your leading scorer? Kind of nuts and bolts, glue guy type of thing, but could go for 20 on any given night. That's what makes this NC State team tough. This was the ACC preseason poll for Kevin Keats, his NC State team picked to finish eighth. It's a preseason poll that already looks strong in some ways and outdated in a couple others. Virginia Tech has gotten off to, you'd say, a better start than Georgia Tech. But NC State picked to finish eighth. They're going to go to 3 0 with a win here, in all likelihood. And everybody's facing challenges early in the season. One of the unexpected challenges of COVID 19 and being here in Bubbleville. When you get here, everyone is escorted to a room for testing. You undergo a COVID-19 test, then you're escorted up to your rooms. You can't leave your room until the next morning when you are hopefully cleared with a negative test, as NC State was this morning. So we asked Kevin Keats about coming here and what his team's been doing, and he said, well, we couldn't get together last night and watch film. This game was only scheduled two days ago. NC State got here early because they had a game on Monday canceled against William Mary. So they tried to watch film over Zoom, but the internet in the hotel was uh, so sketchy that they were unable to do that. So NC State pretty much just focused on himself in the last 24 hours, and uh, that approach seems to keep working swimmingly. Moral of the story, every coach out there, we're telling you who needs to watch film. Well, look, that was the John Wooden philosophy. The only difference was he probably had the top 10 players in the country all playing for the same team. I mean, you know, it wasn't any synergy for Wooden to watch either. But there is something to say with limited practices, with all the disruption that we've had in this early season, to just have some time to focus on yourselves. You know, focus on the little things that you want to do. Focus on the, the, you know, the strategy that becomes your identity. All those little things, I do think it's helpful because if you follow scouting, the way guys scout, assistant coaches scout, they know everything that an opponent does, and so much of the, the attention goes to what they're doing, and you lose focus on what you need to do well. Darian Jordan Thomas on the drive for UMass Lowell. I'd wager that at least half the coaches that we've talked to over the past week plus at least half have made a, a similar point of games are being added and yeah. canceled within 24 48 hours so we are spending more time on ourselves it's it's uh you know almost like uh, coaches are part of a marriage council session i'm spending more time on myself this year <laughs> hey the 22nd annual acc big 10 challenge or big 10 acc challenge depending on what floats your boat is on ESPN and the ESPN app. Look at this game on Tuesday night. North Carolina, Iowa, that's pretty good, 7.30 yep. Eastern. Following that, Illinois Duke, that's pretty good too at Cameron Indoor. Sonic Blockbuster next Tuesday on ESPN, Tuesday and Wednesday all over our networks. We've got a full slate of games in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Baylor was very good last night against Illinois. Ve I mean, ridiculously good and polished and aggressive and confident this early in the season it was one of the more impressed because I, I understand I know how good that Illinois team is yep and and they were just so Mitchell was just so disruptive on Iowa oh, DeSumo right. just forcing tough shots and then getting out and running that felt like such a high-level game this early in the season Gonzaga had a nice win before that yep. over West Virginia, and those two are going to play in Indianapolis Saturday. 43rd meeting between one and two, Gonzaga and Baylor. And the first time out of those 43 that these are the two top teams of the country. By the way, a major tip of the cap to Holly Rowe yes. for taking over, doing some emergency play-by-play -play during the game yesterday when Dave Shulman and Jay Billis lost the power for I mean, Charlotte. Let's just should we try that for five minutes and see how hard it is? Because I could prove to you how hard it is <laughs> if I had to do it. That was impressive, man. Like that was look, awesome. And it's not like it's a game that no one's paying attention to. A lot of eyeballs, man. She handled it very well. As smooth as she always is, Holly Rowe. Hayes, the runner. And he gets it to fall. Cam Hayes with 14. 
that's a kid I'm really going to be watching because I, I want to see how much he can grow this year because if, if he continues to grow this year, look out next year. He's the kind of guy you can play around and play through. Kevin Keats has talked about Ace. He said, I've been hard on him. And he's Should been be. that hard on him because he sees the potential of Hayes. On the spin, Jordan Thomas. Not a travel, but it is a shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. Kim Hayes at NC State rolling merrily along before that date with UConn Saturday. BN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Thanks, Boog. Boog Shambi will be with us for the next two games here at Mohegan Sun, Bubbleville. He's like the MC behind the curtain. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I've heard a rumor that Boog is running for mayor of Bubbleville. He'll be announcing his candidacy on the 7 o'clock broadcast tonight, UConn USC. If you need one more reason to tune in. Thunderbird. Can, no. I, can I be vice mayor? Um, See, yeah, I, I don't know. Is that the name of that particular position? Vice mayor? What's your platform? What's your Bubbleville platform? Well, look, if, if like in student council, somebody that wants to do all the work runs for president. The guy that doesn't want to do anything just runs for vice president. So you ran for vice president? Naturally. <laughs> Did you win? Yeah. And did you accomplish anything? I went on a trip with student council. That's about it. Where'd you go? Uh, Clementon Park in, in New Jersey. It's a real hot spot. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. We say water there. That's all you need to know about whatever you said, Clementine Park. <laughs> yeah, it shows. Tomato, tomato, water, water. Three for Ron Mitchell is good. He had quite a journey. The old shooter's bounce. Here's the freshman Jalen Gibson from Zebulon, North Carolina. They really like this kid. Well, they have to develop a little depth in the front court because you, you look across the ACC, uh, particularly North Carolina, with that kind of size. Manny Bates issues with fouls. DJ Funderburg, you need him on the floor as much as possible, but you've got to develop some depth in the front court to give those guys a little break. Toby Noel will get to the line. Gibson and the freshman E.B. Duana. 6'9 and 6'11 from respectively part of this big freshman class. That's the 10th team foul against the Wolfpack. I think with Bates, he's the kind of guy that He's not going to score a ton. You know, he got 10, 12 points and, and very quietly have 10, 12 points. But his presence defensively, his presence on the glass is so important that he needs to continue to focus on anticipating on the defensive end. When you anticipate, move with the ball, you're, you're not going to be a step behind, less fouls, more time on the floor because they're going to need him. Kevin Keese was talking to us about Bates. He said, look, when, when he came back from a shoulder injury to practice, I said, Basically, don't try to block shots. You're long enough that you can yeah. block them. Well, throw he your hands one with two hands earlier. Yep, throw your hands straight up, wall off. And look, Bates is a great shot blocker already, not like he needs a lot of advice. But foul trouble was an issue last year. Foul trouble, a little bit of an issue early this season as well for Manny Bates. Oh, I got to give officials credit, too, because, it, you know, I don't know, it was a year, a couple years ago, we, we started with the wall up, right? You know, it was freedom of movement, and then we're teaching guys go straight up you can wall up you have right to verticality players took a while to figure out how to do it right without dropping their arms and officials took a little while to call it right because you know you're used to calling it a certain way they've gotten much better now so i think it's another thing you don't need to block every shot you don't need to overcommit. just go straight up to avoid those fouls or lost it on the takeaway the layup good anthony blunt the younger brother of allen his college debut, the freshman for UMass Lowell with his first career bucket. Congratulations to Anthony Blunt on the milestone score. Always something to watch for, even in a 30-point game. And another takeaway. Mitchell aggressive for Lowell. And he scores. No, he didn't. Blunt, he will score his first two college baskets in succession. 
it is a special thing. I, honestly, that's a special thing. You're not going to walk away with a game ball for that, but look, this is major college basketball. And when you look back at this experience, it, it, it all matters. That's why, like, you say that, and there's a part of me that chuckles, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, you're right. You don't want to belittle those things. Sure. I'm, I'm sure you remember vividly your first college basket. I can honestly say I don't. Really? I, don't. I, I, was, I wasn't joking. I figured uh, you would. You know, maybe it's the concussions. I don't remember a lot, but I do remember what shoes I was wearing, so that's oddly enough. Maybe I was that much of a diva. More concerned with my attire than I was. A... All right, I have to ask, what shoes were you wearing for your first well, college basket? Team issue type shoes. It was no big deal. It's not like uh, Michael Jordan sent me a custom pair or anything. It was just a blue and white team issue, but I can picture them. It's the little things, too. Like when you get ready for your first game, you know, you're in the locker room, you're putting the uniform on. It's the height of your optimism in college sports because you don't know any different yet. You've been practicing, you feel confident. You know, you drove to the arena with your teammates and you're so excited and it's a moment unlike anything else. Just the first game. It's a special thing, I really do. I, I kind of, you know, just thinking about that for the first time in a long time. You probably don't think about that enough, all the things that go into playing at this level and how exciting it is for these kids. And Blunt has just scored on three possessions in a row. And, and how cool is this? And I know you can relate to this. His brother, Alan Blunt, just checked in. So Anthony Blunt scores his first three college buckets. And now, as you were able to do, uh, he's playing with his brother. I wonder if his brother's going to yell at him as much as mine did at me. <laughs> Look at that guy. Is that like, is that the only photo we can find where I'm making a weird face? <laughs> like, I was probably about to turn the ball over. <laughs> Joe Forte covered me there. That, uh, that's a North Carolina Jersey guarding you. Is that from the uh, NCAA from the tournament NCAA win? NCAA tournament win, yeah. Because we're 10 seed? Seven seed, but thanks, seven seed. thanks for the comp vote of confidence. Well, it would have been even better if you were a 10 seed. Bigger upset. <laughs> they were the two, right, UNC? They were the two. Yes. They were the two. Kevin, you were just out of diapers watching that game. It was a big deal for you. Thank you very much. I remember it well. I learned to speak that day. UMass Lowell looking for a spark. Probably should have looked forward about 30 minutes ago, but Anthony Blunt coming in, first couple points of his career, and then he just kept piling on. This is exciting stuff. And now playing with his brother on the same floor, special, special stuff. But he's just when you're feeling good, right? Yeah, we got a little something rolling, got a little rhythm, confidence. And they knocked down another 17 for Cam Hayes, youngest scoring game with the first three of his career. If I told you I like his game, that was a question. Oh, were you asking yes, me? Yes. Okay, I didn't know if that was a rhetorical question. Uh, yes, yes, you have told me, but uh, you can keep saying it. His game's terrific. This is the first time I've seen him play in person. And, uh, it looks like a future star at NC State. I think the key's going to be being able to play defense at a high level, and your defense, the intensity defensively, can be matched but under control on the offensive end. I think that's one of the toughest things for a lot of young guys. You're playing defense really for the first time in your life. That's just the, the reality because you're now covering superstars at the previous level. You really got to bring an intensity on defense, but then you have to be able to play fast but under control on the offensive end, and that's always a bit of an adjustment for young guys. How long does that adjustment typically take? Well, it depends if you've got the ball in your hands. I, I think that's the thing. I think it was easier for me because I played off the ball. You know, it was easier, you're in a strong position with the ball, but for point guards, you're playing fast, you're trying to make quick decisions, and you're playing under a lot of pressure. It does take a little bit of a time. And, and I think at times, if you're Kevin Keats, you've got to live with some mistakes, because mistakes actually help you grow. You just want to make those mistakes here and not in ACC play as much. NC State ball after a pretty drive and score from Shaquille Moore. Everything's coming up Wolfpack here in their Bubbleville opener. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Air Force Reserve. Explore your opportunities with the Air Force Reserve.
Top 20 triple header college basketball Sunday on ESPN. The first one, Villanova and Texas. Boy, is that going to be good. We've seen Villanova impress here in Bubbleville. Texas coming off the Maui Invitational win in Asheville at 1 Eastern, followed by Xavier in Cincinnati, which is always a scrap fest. And then Kentucky against Georgia Tech, 1, 3, and 5 Eastern. Sunday on ESPN and the ESPN app. Is scrap fest in the dictionary? Um, it's in my dictionary. Yeah. It's always a scrap fest. You even said it a little differently, right? The clock problem. Yep. Scrap fest. Scrap fest. It's honestly, it's a good way to put it. I mean, any game that's a, a rivalry like that, it kind of becomes that either way. I'm just trying to find a, a different term for no love lost between those two. Man, you sound yeah. like a professional broadcaster. Throw the records there. out the window, John, when Xavier and Cincinnati meet. Up top more and put in by E.B. Dewana, the freshman out of Ghana. You know what the best thing for some of these freshman front court players is going to be is practice. Playing against Manny Bates, D.J. Funderburg, just get reps against some experienced guys. That's what you need. Especially in a year where practice opportunities were limited yeah. in the offseason. On the deck, Dewana picks up the ball. Kill Moore, the freshman, runs the show for North Carolina State. Good nice fine. feed. Seabrun was hacked. And he will go to the line. Non-shooting fouls on the floor, but NC State is in the double bonus. Oh, getting comfortable on the floor helps you with feel, helps you play with instincts, and that's what you want. You want guys to be able to think a little bit less and just play with feel, trust your instincts. You sound like uh, Obi-Wan. Kenobi? Yeah. Well, of course what, I, what other Obi-Wan do you I know? know. I mean, I, I Obi-Wan uh, Jones? You mean old Ben? What's that, old Ben, yes. Is that the biggest plot yeah. hole of the Star Wars movies that Obi-Wan Kenobi was hiding out as old Ben Kenobi? Like, how many Kenobis are in the galaxy? Do you not think anybody would figure it out? Two free throws for Sebron. Back here on Earth. NC State's going to make another change. Chase Graham, the sophomore, will come in. Max Farthing in the game as well. Kevin Keats okay, gets to empty the bench for the game against UConn in less than 48 hours. UConn's coming up against USC. It'll be the first time we see UConn here in the bubble. You've seen USC and Evan Mobley already. What stands out to you as you uh, look forward to that next game? You got a team in UConn that likes to get to the basket. They're good in transition. They attack. But between Evan and Isaiah Mobley, they really protect the rim. They play disciplined basketball. And I'm more impressed with kind of the fundamentals of Evan Mobley, more so than just the potential and the talent. I mean, he broke down. He was under control. He plays at a good pace. He's always around the ball defensively. He got good rebounds. And so did Isaiah. I think we... We, we look at Evan Mobley and say, well, he's the star, but his brother actually allows him to thrive because his brother actually gets a lot of rebounds, defends a little oh bit God. more. Evan Mobley can play all over the court because you've got that rim protector in Isaiah. I really like the potential of that USC team. I do. Hey, I hope you know, uh, Noel, by the way, just scored 10 points, 30th straight game in double figures. And I do want to note the man who just had the rebound, Caleb Bates, Freshman for UMass Lowell just scored his first career bucket a couple of possessions ago out of Mount Zion Prep in Detroit. So some milestone performances individually for some of these UMass Lowell players. UMass Lowell fouls under 22, Caleb Bates is first. And Bates just committed his first college foul. We don't celebrate that one as much, but <laughs> you know, it's funny watching, going back. We saw Virginia obviously losing to San Francisco. UMass Lowell beat San Francisco, and I guess in some weird way that means UMass Lowell's better than Virginia. It's a transitive victory. Um, yes. It's interesting how game to game, how hey, different a team can look. And I think it's true, some of the mid-majors, but also in the Power Five, how game to game and based on matchups, how different you can look. And, and it really comes down to whether you're able to play the game at your terms or not. That's where I look at the first five minutes of the game and say, whose pace is this at? Who's got the rhythm? Who doesn't? Do we like the way the game's played or don't we? Because that may determine the outcome of the game. 
in that Virginia San Francisco game then how quickly could you tell that Virginia was not playing it at its terms not dictating the game at its terms. five minutes into the second half yeah it was not the first half it was five minutes into the second half where you know, San Francisco just attacked they scored 40 points in the second half because they became the aggressor and it, and it really exposed the vulnerability of Virginia there's our player of the game, Jericho Hellams. Player of the game brought to you by Air Force Reserve. Jericho Hellams got his second start of the year. He played 25 minutes. He scored 17 points, five rebounds, five assists, one block, two steals. And the best plus minus of anybody in the game, NC State plus 26 in Hellams' 25 minutes. Are you a plus minus guy? Uh, I am when it proves my point on player of the game. I in am, all sincerity, I, I, I'm a little bit because I, I it's hard. It just depends on so many other variables. I, I don't typically use it. Well, not that I'm the end all be all, but the way I like it is if it really reflects what I'm seeing, I like it. But there are some right. times when it just doesn't reflect what you're seeing. And there are some, some variables in there that you can't really take into account. Basically, what I'm, I'm admitting is that I just used it selectively for that. Oh, okay. What do you think your plus minus is as an analyst this week? Oh, Lord. It's debatable. Bates for three, no. Rebound to Mitchell for three. And the rebound to Shaquille Moore. Very interested to see this NC State against, uh, NC State team against UConn. Gonna be an interesting matchup. I think NC State has the guard play to match up well, wants to play with pace and intensity and may possibly have the size advantage down low. Not a good foul. I think UConn's good, too. And that's yeah. a team that played very well at the end of last season. A real threat to win the American Conference Tournament before it was canceled. Yep. Now they are in the Big East. You expect that to be a positive for the program? Well, yeah. I mean, in every sense of the way for recruiting that the makeup of the Big East fits what UConn is, where you're going to get some freshmen and sophomores and turn them into juniors and seniors. You're not going to get as many transfers. You're going to be able to build the program around how you want to play. And in many ways, the team is starting to really reflect that of its coach. And those are the best teams anyway. Team has to be a reflection of the identity of the coach, right? Coach is coach of their identity. And the team should look like that. Uh, and I think we're starting to see that. Going to be some fun coach watching in that next game with Danny Hurley, who is yeah. never silent on the sideline. Jeez. Chase Graham hits a three for North Carolina State. The sophomore out of Raleigh with his first bucket of the season. Yeah, we've got good basketball coming up. Mm -hmm. This was a bit of a warm up, but we have really good basketball coming up. And Florida BC tonight. What's Florida going to look like after shaking off a whole bunch of rust in the opener against Army yesterday? We'll see. ESPN tonight. NC State wins big in the first of our triple header. Kevin Keats a wave goodbye to Pat Duquette. And the Wolfpack are 3-0 with that game against Connecticut coming up Saturday at noon. Thanks for being with us on this Thursday night. For John Crispin, our entire outstanding crew, Kevin Brown. College Football Live is next here on ESPNU.